Hi and welcome to this video about fair value measurement as prescribed by the standard IFRS 13. I am Sylvia of cpdbox.com, the website full of free articles, video lectures, so that you can learn with us from scratch and get to the very advanced level, get your CPD certificates, and if you're stuck, then we can help with the advice. Before, the guidance for setting the fair value differed throughout the standards and therefore IFRS 13 fair value measurement was issued. IFRS 13 must be applied for the period starting 1st January 2013 or later. So it has been in place for some time. Now, the objective of IFRS 13 is to define what the fair value is and to set out the framework for measuring it and require disclosure about fair value measurements. So, Please be aware that IFRS 13 guides you how to set fair value and not when to apply fair value. That's arranged by other standards. So for example, if you classify the financial asset as at fair value through profit or loss in line with IFRS 9, then IFRS 9 tells you when you can classify and measure that asset at fair value. But IFRS 13 tells you how to measure the fair value. So IFRS 13 defines fair value as the price that would be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer liability in an orderly transaction. So by the way, that it's not a forced sale between market participants at the measurement date. And the price that would be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer a liability is called exit price. And let me also stress that fair value is market-based measurement and not entity-based measurement. So it takes market conditions into account. Fair value measurement requires an entity to determine all of the following factors. So let me name them shortly. First, the particular asset or liability that you're measuring, it must be determined consistently with its unit of account. So are you measuring a group of assets or single asset, right? Secondly, and this applies to non-financial assets only, the valuation premise that is appropriate for measurement. So what is the use to which the asset is put? Are you going to sell it? Are you going to use it internally? And this should be consistent with its highest and best use. Number three, the principal or the most advantageous market for the asset or liability. And number four, the valuation technique appropriate for the measurement, considering the data that are available, market participants, and of course, the level of fair value hierarchy that I will talk about a bit later. So let's explain the basic requirements in more details. With reference to setting the particular asset or liability that you're measuring, you need to determine whether you're valuing individual or standalone asset or liability or a group of assets or liabilities. And then depends on the unit of account for the asset or liability. So that's basically the level of aggregation and it's set elsewhere, not in IFRS 13 directly. Then IFRS 13 requires an entity to consider the characteristics of that asset or liability when measuring fair value, especially the condition, location of the asset, and also some restrictions that there might be preventing the asset to sell or use. And fair value measurement assumes that the transaction to sell the asset or to transfer the liability occurs either on the principal market or if that is not available, then on the most advantageous market for the asset or liability. So why is it so important? Well, because the same asset or liability can be traded in more markets, right? In the first instance, an entity shall look to the principal market and the principal market is that with the greatest volume or level of activity for the asset or liability. And what if there is no principal market? For example, the levels and frequency of trading of the same share are about the same on two or three stock exchanges, right? So in this case, you should consider what's most advantageous for you. And the most advantageous would be the one that maximizes the amount that you would receive to sell the asset or minimize the amount that you would need to pay to transfer the liability after considering transaction and transport costs. Then IFRS 13 provides further guidance on market participants, who they are, what their characteristics should be, 
what the orderly transactions are, how to set the fair value on initial recognition and many more details. But let's now focus on actually how to set the fair value, more specifically methods. So when determining fair value, you are required to use certain valuation techniques that are appropriate given the circumstances and data that you have in hand. And these techniques must maximize the use of relevant observable inputs. So you should look to the market as much as possible and minimize the use of unobservable inputs like discounted cash flows or other judgmental information. IFRS 13 recognizes three main valuation approaches, market approach. So here you basically are looking to the market prices of similar assets or liabilities. For example, you can use market multiples derived from a set of comparables. And typical example is the use of EBITDA multiple for valuing some business. Another example of market approach is matrix pricing, and that is a mathematical technique used principally to value some types of financial instruments. The second valuation technique recognized by IFRS 13 is cost approach, and this technique is applicable mostly to non-financial or physical assets. The cost approach reflects the amount that would be required currently to replace the service capacity of that asset. And this is often referred to as current replacement cost. But you need to take obsolescence of the asset into account because the price to sell the asset is based on the price somebody else would buy it for. Adjust it for obsolescence. What is it? Well, it's simply physical deterioration of the asset or functional or technical obsolescence or economical obsolescence too. So something like decreased functionality due to wear and tear or existence of newer, more efficient technologies and so on. The third approach is income approach and it converts future amounts, for example, cash flows or income and expenses to a single current or discounted amount. When the income approach is used, then the fair value measurement reflects current market expectations about those future amounts. So the examples of such approach are present value techniques and these use estimations of future cash flows and discount them to the present value or the option pricing models, the multi-period excess earning method and many others. So here you're welcome to check our IFRS kit course available on our website with examples on these approaches. So here we drafted various kinds of valuation techniques. And I must say that IFRS 13 does not give priority to one or another. That's up to your judgment to use. But please remember one basic principle. You shall maximize observable inputs. That is use market data as much as possible and minimize unobservable inputs. You shall utilize market approaches first, if possible, as they use the observable market inputs and only then to apply other techniques such as present value techniques. And let me also say that you should be consistent in applying one valuation technique. You can change valuation technique, but it's treated as change in accounting estimate in line with IS8. So you should have a good reason to do so and you need to disclose the fact. All right. Let me remind you the basic rule. You should always prefer the use of observable inputs because they are more reliable and place less important to unobservable inputs. And therefore, IFRS 13 categorizes various inputs or information that you're using in the valuation of your assets or liabilities into your fair value hierarchy. The fair value hierarchy classifies inputs into three levels. Level one includes quoted prices unadjusted by some risk premium or discount. And those must be in active markets for identical assets or liabilities that the entity can access at a measurement date. So, for example, quoted prices of equity shares traded on a stock exchange. That's a very, very direct way of valuing your assets. Level two inputs are inputs other than quoted prices included within level one that are observable for the asset or liability either directly or indirectly. So for example, quoted price for similar asset or liability 
quoted prices for identical or similar assets or liabilities in markets that are not active or inputs other than quoted prices that are observable for that asset or liability. So, for example, you can find interest rates or yield curves published on these finance servers like Yahoo, Bloomberg or any other. And level three inputs are all other unobservable inputs for asset or liability like financial forecasts historical volatility and that's the volatility for the shares derived from shares historical prices and it's kind of used for valuation or call or put options related to shares or that's also adjustment to mid-market consensus prices that's when the prices are set in bid ask price to cover dealers margin so again you should maximize the use of level one inputs if these are not available then use level two inputs and only if these are not available use level three inputs but really you shall minimize the use of level three okay finally ifrs 13 sets a number of disclosures that are aimed to provide understanding of how you set the fair value what techniques you used and also helps you understand the effects of fair value measurements. So that was it, short summary of IFRS 13. If you'd like to learn more, please visit the website cpdbox.com, subscribe to our free newsletter, check our courses on various different topics, learn IFRS and other topics in an entertaining way, get your CPDs, and please, sharing is caring, and I will be grateful if you share this video with your friends. Bye, and thanks for watching.